Hello, everyone. It is Franco's World, episode 14. It is a Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. You heard that right. It is Wednesday the 14th. Uh, people forget that I'm a real-life person and have real-life jobs and other things that need to be taken care of, and I apologize. I didn't record the episode and get it out on Tuesday. So we're sending it out on Wednesday. And it's even late on Wednesday because, like I said, work stuff. I don't want to get into work stuff, but that's what it is. But today's episode is going to be fantastic. I, I hustled home as quick as I could. I flew home. I didn't even drive. I just I just I just flew. <laughs> um yeah, so uh it's gonna be a good show. We're gonna answer a lot of the fan Nope. A lot of the listener statements. I asked on my Instagram at Franco's World underscore what everyone's favorite movie was in the past year that they've watched. And I have gotten some fantastic answers and a lot of them to the point where most of today's episode will consist of me debating internally uh, about the movie that you, you know, post. So sit back, relax. Or maybe don't relax if you're driving and listening to this. You should probably focus on the road. But I hope you enjoy today's block of entertainment as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And I cannot wait to debate. All right, so it is time for the movie breakdown. I think I was talking to my mom about this. She's a great critic. She knows me better than I know myself. And I think she arguably knows what funny is better than I do. She was like, you need to stop just cutting off in between each segment. I'm like, Mom, I'm giving the people a break if they want to stop it. They don't have to listen to the whole thing continuously. She was like, no, you can't just say, all right, we'll be right back because you're not going anywhere. You're in the same spot the whole time. But, Mom, sometimes I need a break too. No, you're not listening. Maybe just like play like music. You just you can't just have – you can't just stop it and, and come back. So that's something I'm looking into. Maybe somehow get some music because I don't know the rules – and I don't want to play like snippets of something and then just get taken to the cleaners on on royalty. Okay. The movies. We're going to the movies, kids. We're going to the movies. First movie that we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about these. We're going to break them down. We're going to compare and contrast. We're going to go off tangent on random rants like I always do. And uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'll grade you, because I didn't tell you guys what I was going to do with these. I just said, tell me the best movie that you've seen in the past year. So, you know, I could absolutely berate you as an individual if you put something in here. I would never do that. I'm just saying I could if I wanted to, but I won't. Okay, the movies. The first movie that we're going to discuss here is H.Y. says, the best movie she saw in the past year. Won't you be my neighbor? I cried the whole time. Won't You Be My Neighbor, the, I guess, by the, the documentary of uh, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Now, I was in Pittsburgh at the time when this movie was coming out. I was there last summer working a little summer job, and that was a ton of fun because I got to help like do like little promotion stuff, like pass out promotional things about the movie and all that stuff. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the documentary was great. I love Mr. Rogers. I watched it a ton growing up, and I even saw some of that Daniel Tiger show, which is kind of Mr. Rogers for the new age kids. My nephew and niece, they like that a lot. But being in Pittsburgh, when the show is based out of there, and and it was really cool because, like, you had had national media that would come through there and, like, you know, all these people are on the talk shows and they're promoting the movie. And I don't know. It's just, like, Mr. Rogers is just a genuinely good guy. And that's, like, I'm not going to compare myself to Mr. Rogers, no. But I am saying I would like to be admired in the public eye as much as he was for just being a guy that cares about people getting quality content, quality entertainment that's enjoyable for most ages. Furthermore on that, um, the documentary is great if people haven't seen it, but the movie that's coming out with Tom Hanks, who is America's dad. Oh yeah. You can, you can best believe I'm going to be there. I love Tom Hanks. I love Tom Hanks. I, anyone who doesn't love Tom Hanks, just stop listening to the show. I know, you know, I don't get a, a ton of viewers. I think we've reached over 500 total listens, like on all platforms for all the episodes. I think we've reached over 
we're if we haven't reached it, we're going to reach it with this episode. But I'll lose a couple for the sake of defending TH, America's dad. Text me and tell me what you what your favorite Tom Hanks movie is. Mine might be Catch Me If You Can, if we're being honest. Get in the car! Get in the car! He's just screaming about it. Okay. Won't You Be My Neighbor? Fantastic documentary if you haven't seen it. CH <laughs> says, Great Gatsby, parentheses, don't judge. I would never judge you, CH. I would never judge you on on that. You you know more about that stuff than I do. So, uh, The Great Gatsby, I read the book. I've watched snippets of the movie, and I think somebody dies. They, it's, a, it's a rich guy who throws a lot of parties, and it's a ton of fun, and then someone dies. There is a death in the thing, but they got that old-school classic feel with the, the, the glitz and the glamour and putting on the ritz and all that stuff. Great Gatsby. That's one I think a lot of... I mean, that was popular when I was in like high school and stuff like that. But am I wrong to think that was... Uh, like, that was a popular choice among, like, women? Maybe? I haven't seen it. Okay, this is me. Yeah, you guys caught me. I And I don't claim to be a cinephile, but I have seen a, my fair share of movies throughout the years. And you guys, I think, are going to find out with this episode. Wait a minute. He's not what he say he is. He doesn't watch as many movies as, as he claims to. I haven't seen The Great Gatsby. I read the book. I read the book so poorly that I don't even remember what happens. I'm never judge you for that, CH. I would never judge anybody for commenting on on the show. It helps the sh- uh, you guys. Without you, there wouldn't be anything. And next episode, I might not even do a, a a question segment because I'm so I'm relying on it so heavy for this episode. My cousin, my cousin, Jaybird says the new aladdin movie that's the best movie you watched in the past year is the new aladdin movie sheesh i haven't seen it i mean i have no desire to see any of these new remakes i don't want to see the what is it the lion king i don't want to see that i don't want to see here's the thing i didn't want to see aladdin whenever i saw will smith was going to be the genie now we all love will smith yes we can all agree that we like will smith This audience likes Will Smith. Will Smith lost me a little bit, guys, if I'm being honest. Will Smith lost me when he became a YouTuber and Instagram influencer. Will, you're a very respected actor. I understand you want to grow your platform and do things that you want to do. But this whole you being a YouTuber thing and like Instagram influencer, not the biggest fan of, if I'm being honest. Because it's not you. And maybe... I'm not even going to say maybe it is. It's not you, Will. We love you on the silver screen, Will. We love you on the silver screen. Too much of anyone can be a bad thing. I think we can all admit that. And whenever Aladdin, the genie, blue, is Will Smith, it's so hard. Because the last genie, Robin Williams, they they got a comedian. And now they're getting an actor. I guess you could say a comedic actor. He's done funny roles. But the... Get someone else. Don't... I'm not going to watch it. Will Smith, Blue Genie, I'm out. I am Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now this I haven't seen, but I want to. And not because it's like a Tarantino thing. Or a DiCaprio thing, or a Brad Pitt thing, or a Margot Robbie thing, or C. I'm just naming names. Just because I'm curious to see how they tie in the Manson murders with everything. Because that is some aspect of it. I remember hearing about this movie being in development and in production and stuff like that years ago. And I was like, hmm, I like period pieces. I like movies with history in them. How are they going to tie in the Manson murder? I don't know how they did it, because I have... Hidden spoilers for myself. I've also hidden in-game spoilers for myself. Avengers... Oh, wait. Someone said that later. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that later. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I have not seen it yet. I've heard many great things from, from, from my friends that know way more about cinema than I do. So I'm going to have to give it a look-see. 
apparently the local movie theater. I just found this out the other day. The movie theater up here does five dollar Tuesday matinees. If I could ever play hooky and do a little Tuesday businessman special, I might have to do it and watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and then tweet out my thoughts on Franco's World underscore. Next one, SB said us. Us. From the creative mind of Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. Wow. Us was crazy. And, you know, you could tie in a lot of the parallels between us and Get Out. You know? Apparently the next one he's making is supposed to be the scariest one of them all. That's what he said, I think. Us was pretty nuts. I, the, I liked the story and I liked... You know, every sort of like hidden detail of it and Easter eggs and all that stuff and how they're, you know, I guess the quote unquote cinematography, whatever the right word would be there. Uh, the thing that got me was the woman's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of bothered me. I understand why they did it because she got like choked out as a kid or whatever and like left in the upside down world. But her voice, I, I was listening to her voice the whole time, and she sounded like two things to me. She sounded like when, when SpongeBob needed water, she was like, we need, it, we need water. But then she also kind of sounded like Doc Rivers after a game. I don't know. You know I don't know. Oh, man. My phone's ringing. You know, I don't know. Uh, I saw Austin. I cut him from my own team. You know? It's uh, Doc Rivers. It's a... Uh, you know, I coached Celtics for a long time. This hurts really bad doing it, but I'm going to keep doing it for the sake of a comedy bit. If I can think of one more thing that... What what would Doc Rivers say? Back in the day when the when the Clippers had Blake Griffin and they got eliminated from the playoffs in the first round every year, they'd always be like, It's not Blake's fault. It's not on Blake. It's a whole team. It's not Blake's fault. All right, I'm done with that. That hurts so bad. I think I ruined my voice permanently. All right, we're good. <laughs> That's why I didn't like all of us. Okay, so this next one uh, is two people, and it's the same thing. So MH and MC both said Booksmart. I have not seen Booksmart. I watched the trailer for it after you guys put this in, and buddy, it looks hilarious. I'm going to read the synopsis for you right here for those that don't know what Booksmart is. I think it's come out already, but it looks hilarious. It looks hilarious. It says 2019. Has it come out already? Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, it's come out already, you moron. They just said that's their favorite movie they watched in the past year. Oh, yeah, you're right. My bad. Okay, so academic overachievers Amy and Molly thought keeping their noses to the grindstone gave them a leg up on their high school peers. But on the eve of graduation, the best friends suddenly realized that they may have missed out on special moments of their teenage years. Determined to make up for lost time, the girls decide to cram four years of not to be missed fun into one night, a chaotic adventure that no amount of book smarts could prepare them for. So it's, you know, these teen girls and they're good, you know, I guess the quote unquote good girls, like they uh, get the work done, they do the right thing, all that stuff. But they didn't have any fun because they want to get into good school. Unbeknownst to them, the same people that were doing the fun things also got into the same schools as them. Whoops, we missed out on some good times. Better make up for lost time. And then hijinks ensues. And then hijinks ensued. It looks funny. Like, it generally looks funny. I, I know, like, the comedy genre isn't what it used to be, and they always get bad reviews, and they always do this and do that. This looks like one of the best comedy movies in the past few years. I'm very excited to see it, and I will watch it soon. Okay, JP. Bohemian Rhapsody by far, brother. That's what he says. I loved Bohemian Rhapsody. I watched it recently. I watched Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, I'm not going to watch Rocket Man because apparently that is a musical and it's not like a biography of Elton John, who is amazing. So we, so, so we, so I watched Bohemian Rhapsody not, not knowing what to expect. I didn't know if it was just going to be a Freddie Mercury thing or if it was just going to be the whole band thing. And I was pleased with it. I was pleased with how they balanced it out. Okay. Freddie being the front man, you need him to get more time. And the stuff that he was going through with his health, you're going to need that to get more time than the rest of the band. And sort of the bands come up. 
The Queen, the, 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 the Queen movie is essentially just a Freddie Mercury story. And that's fine, if I'm being honest. That, to me, is fine. It was incredibly sad to see the things that he went through and the state that he had was in at certain parts of his life and being taken advantage of by people that claimed they had their best interests in mind. And they did it. But everything worked out in the end, and he is immortalized in our minds forever for being a fantastic entertainer. Okay. JB. JB says, X. Machina. Now, robots terrify me to death. For those that don't know, Ex Machina, uh, there's a guy, he like wins some sort of coding contest, and he gets to hang out at some computer guy's home, some high-tech home out there in the woods where no one knows where it is. He gets dropped off via helicopter, so that tells you how far out it is. This house is, is packed to the gills with technology. They're building stuff, robots, computers, everything under the sun. So the nerdy guy meets the boss. He's a little weird. He drinks a lot, maybe a little bit too much. His wife shows up, or maybe his girlfriend. I don't know. There's a dance scene that's not, it's not a dance movie at all, but there's a dance scene. It's pretty, honestly, pretty good. But then, uh, so the experiment is to see, I don't even remember what the robot's name was. We'll just call it X, since I have, that's the title of the movie. I know it has nothing to do with the well, robot, but X. X hangs out with the nerd guy, and they get to know each other. And it's like a week. This movie takes the span over like a, a week. But on like day three, the questions are already getting sexualized. That quick, the robot's like, what's the deal here? Like, or, do you want to do, do you want to hook up? Like, what's the deal? And the guy is like, uh, is that even a thing? Are you like, is that even possible? You're a robot. I think it was possible. I don't remember. But the creepy thing is, is the computer guy, not the nerd guy, the boss, is like watching them, I guess, to monitor the experiment. They think they're getting too close for each other, so the boss starts like programming the... I don't know. He's He starts going crazy with the programming. He knew... Or no, he didn't know. Okay, no. The, the computer knew. The compute, the ex knew. The robot lady knew, is a woman, knew that she would convince the nerd guy to somehow set her free by turning him against the boss guy. Who had, The boss guy didn't want to do anything but just create some sort of experiment. But, but the computer woman prevailed. And she played her cards right. And in doing so, murdered. The one guy, the boss, she murdered the boss, like stabbed him in the heart. Watching her run down the hallway with her robot legs was terrifying. I'm already afraid of robots to the point where I blocked Sophie the robot and Watson and other things on Twitter. I know it's like I don't want the government getting me. I have an Amazon. I have an Alexa sitting right here. My uh, Mac has the camera on it and I don't have it covered up. My iPhone is also right here with the camera on it, not covered up. I can't hide from the robots. I can't hide from the robots, but this movie did not help my fear of robots. So only the computer guy can unlock the doors. Well, guess what? Computer guy's dead. And Ex Machina has left the building. Which means Nerd Boy is stuck in a room by himself to die. A vicious death of starvation and... I guess death by starvation and lack of water and dehydration and all that stuff. Just left to die. And she roams the streets of New York. I think that's what the final scene was. She's like roaming popular streets. Terrifying movie, by the way. Terrifying movie, by the way. I didn't watch it for years. I watched it with my buddy, Mr. Gabe, uh, my last semester of college. He was like, you need to see this. It's going to blow your mind. And it did. I don't like robots, man. I don't like robots. So we got a few more here. We got 10 minutes left. Uh, let's see. Wild and Wonderful Podcast, co-hosted by a random guy. Um, great show, by the way. They always have great, they always have fantastic guests. Like, it's crazy what good of a guest they get. So if you're into sports at all, 
and you want to support um, fellow West Virginians, check out their show. It's fantastic. Okay. They said, it wasn't in the past year, but when I saw Dunkirk in theaters, it was phenomenal. I guess bad times at El Royale, too. Well, the good news is, hey, random guys, I've seen both of those. My good friend, Mr. MC, uh, told me to watch Bad Times at El Royale, and I loved it. Because it's the one of those movies where they tell you the ending in the beginning, and then they kind of like, you have to like piece it together, because they break it up into chapters, and each chapter is a different character's point of view. It's a whodunit. That's what it is, a whodunit. I love a good whodunit. I love a good murder mystery, a whodunit, a uh, wild goose chase, if you will. I can't get enough of those. I love those type of movies. So, when watching that, I was on the edge of my seat my whole time because I didn't know what to expect. People are not who they say they are. People are living double lives. People are lying and cheating and double-crossing each other. And people who you thought were good end up not being good. It's a Banana Land movie. So Bad Times at the El Royale, I highly recommend. Dunkirk. Also, so you guys said you said Dunkirk was the best thing. You can you can do it. you can walk. They can't hear you. The Dunkirk also. So the timeline that Christopher Nolan created in Dunkirk made the movie crazy. So it's like one day, one week, and one uh, hour all combined uh, to a climax at the very end. It's crazy. I love Christopher Nolan movies. I'm a sucker for them. And the movie was scored by Hans Zimmer, who I think makes the best uh, theatrical or not theatrical, whatever the right word would be, scores in movie. So he used like the ticking of a watch. And what it does, it just builds suspense. It's just like tick, 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 tick. It makes your heart just go faster and faster and faster. And he also used this other thing that's just like a constant like uh, crescendo in music. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a – it plays a trick on our minds. It's the same four bars over and over again, but it constantly makes it seem like it's rising, rising, rising to the point where your heart rate is rising and you're building an anticipation. Hans Zimmer score. You need to look up how he made that. There's a YouTube video about it. It's incredible. I love that movie so much to the point where I thought it should have gotten the Oscar for Best Picture during that year. I think Moonlight did that year, which is a good movie. Don't get me wrong. Uh, or was it Shape of Water, maybe? Yeah, I think it might have been Shape of Water, actually. My bad. I didn't like Shape of Water. I didn't think like a a person being like a a love romance musical comedy drama with some sort of fish man and a lady janitor was a cinematic marvel. That's on me, I guess. I like Dunkirk better. My favorite aspect of Dunkirk, because they have the land, the air, and the sea, was the air. And that's because Tom Hardy's character in it was incredible. I think Ewan McGregor was an airman too in that. Or no. Banna? Richard Banna? Matt? Kenneth Branagh. Bang. That's what it is. Thank you. Kenneth Branagh. I think he was in there too. Uh, he, was, he was actually in the, the land maybe. But either way. Um, sorry. My phone keeps going off. Dunkirk with Tom Hardy. My favorite scene is at the end. So he 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 doesn't have enough gas to complete the mission and get back home safely. So he decides to take his his you know the honor the honorable way and and complete the mission. And doing so, runs out of gas and has to land the plane behind enemy lines, knowing his death is certain. It's a really beautiful moment. It's a really beautiful scene because he like opens the cockpit window and like gets one last bit of like freedom, one last bit of fresh air. He just like feels that against his, against his face. And then he lands the plane safely, gets out of it, shoots a flare gun into it to burn all like the evidence and intelligence. And he sits back and you can see the flames in his eyes and his face is lit up by the, by the glow, by the reddish orange hue of the flames. And then you turn around and it's behind uh, his shot and, but it's not a POV shot. It's just behind him. And you're seeing the plane in flames and then the music sets in and you kind of see some the enemy in the background walking towards him. But the look in his eyes, it's just a sense of peace. It's a sense of calmness. It's a sense of accomplishment. And that's why I like it. The very ending shot 
where Tom Hardy's plane lands and he's just like, oh, finally, he's like, I did it. I loved it. He was at peace with himself. Okay, uh, CP. CP, we got three more here. Three more. Let's see if we can get three more in five minutes. I've talked about movies for 30 minutes, so congratulations if you've stayed on. Remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at FrancosWood underscore and tell your friends and tell your family and tell your coworkers to listen to the show. So CP says, Endgame makes this very unfair. Well, I haven't seen Endgame. I haven't seen Endgame. I've somehow not spoiled Endgame for myself in these months. It's crazy. I'm, I don't know how I've done it, but I've done it. I would somehow need to see that soon. So, uh, yeah, I don't have anything to say about Endgame. I don't know anything about Endgame. I don't watch a lot of the um, superhero movies. So, yeah. There was something I was going to say about Endgame earlier. And I was like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. I'll get that. I'll talk about it later. It might have been the fact that I haven't spoiled it for myself somehow on Twitter. All right. RT said Caddyshack. RT, love Caddyshack. I love uh, all the guys in Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, my arm. Oh, someone stepped on a duck. I don't get no respect. Hi, Rodney Dangerfield. Okay. But that movie's hilarious. I, you know, you, I heard that uh, – I heard like I was actually like talking to people. But like there's rumor that Chevy Chase and Bill Murray didn't get along at all, which makes sense. They were both on SNL. They were both trying to be stars. None of this town ain't big enough for the tubish. It makes sense. But I love Caddy Shack, and it's on Netflix. So if you guys haven't seen it and you're into old goofy, like I think it was made in 1980, uh, old goofy, like it's either 1980 or like in the 70s. So if you're into those type of comedies, definitely check it out. And lastly, MF says Bridesmaid with the shrug emoji. Bridesmaids is hilarious. You don't have to shrug emoji at that. It's a really good movie. My sister, she loves that movie to the point whenever the song that they sing during like karaoke or whatever comes on and like if we'll be out and we'll hear that song, she like kind of like does a fake karaoke thing and like annoys me to death with it. I remember she, my sister knows what I'm talking about here. I'm embarrassing her, but she does a killer uh, a karaoke thing about that. She might have to post that on Instagram. I like Bridesmaids though. The airplane scene is is funny. The scene where uh, what's the name? I forgot uh, the one's name, but uh, the character that takes all the dogs. That scene is hilarious to me. She's like, "I took ten, but I realized that was too much, so I'm to have seven now or whatever." I like bridesmaids. I remember watching that man. I had a movie day in high school, like a weekend. It was like a Sunday. Went to Blockbuster. Yes, Blockbuster. After uh, church, picked up like four movies. We got Bridesmaids, Moneyball, 30 Minutes or Less, and one more. That might have been it. 30 Minutes or Less was definitely forgettable. Moneyball is my favorite sports movie of all time. And Bridesmaids, really good comedy movie. I don't know what else to say about it. We've been talking about minutes for movies for 28 minutes. I guess I, at this point, I am supposed to say the best movie that I saw in the past year, I guess, huh? Is that is that what I'm supposed to do? Talk about the best movie that I have seen in the past year? Well, shoot. I'm having a hard time beating Interstellar, even though I've watched that a billion times. I'm having a hard time doing it. But in the past year, so I guess it's year to date, not... Is it year to date or I'm making the rules, so I guess I can make it year to date, not in <clears throat> 2019. Hmm... So tough because because I watch a lot of dumb movies and I just leave them on as background noise. What was the one I saw? Um, so you guys are gonna say I'm weird. You guys are gonna say I'm dumb. You guys are gonna say I'm late. Man, I'm actually having a really hard time figuring out what type of movie. I don't want to say anything too dumb because I don't want to get judged. But I'm honestly having a hard time remembering. So with that being said, I guess I'm gonna have to say. That Baby Driver was the best movie I saw in the month yet? Baby Driver, maybe? I can't top Interstellar, honestly. I, I, I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. 
Maybe that'll be for next week. How about you? How about that? How about you give me a week to think about it, and when I come back next week, I'll start off the show with my favorite movie that I have watched in the past year. In the meantime, you just keep taking care of yourself and keep all those questions and comments coming, folks, because because I read all of them. And I hope you enjoy today's block of entertainment as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And remember to tell your friends and your family and your coworkers about the show so we can help it grow. Thank you very much. I will see you when I see you, and I hope you have a great day.